لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers as the month of Ramadan is approaching us day by day, it is important and it is crucial for the Muslim to be in preparation of this blessed month. And it is important that we understand that it is no other than a great blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal that he allows us to witness another month from the months of Ramadan. My dear brothers, fasting is not a routine. And fasting is not only a tradition. And fasting is not about getting together as a family and eating and drinking and whatever else. These are all secondary things. The main purpose of fasting the blessed month of Ramadan is as Allah Azza wa Jal taught us in order to gain taqwa. This is the very reason why the blessed month has been legislated upon us in order to become God-fearing, in order to have piety of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh you who have believed, addressing the believers, because only the believers will respond. O oh you who believe, Fasting has been prescribed upon you just as it was prescribed upon those before you from the Jews and the Christians. Allah Azza wa Jal says, in order for you to attain taqwa. This is the purpose of fasting, my dear brothers. Allah Azza wa Jal does not want you to refrain from eating and drinking and sexual relations for any other reason. He doesn't need you not to eat. And he doesn't need you not to drink. And he does not need you not to be intimate with your wife. Allah is in need of nothing. But the reason why he legislated this worship is so that we get closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brother, if the month of Ramadan is not taken as an opportunity to better yourself and to fix yourself and to gain closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal, you have not met the purpose of why Allah has legislated this month. And my dear brothers, how many times 
do we hear our mashayikh and our du'at saying that it is a blessing that Allah Azza wa Jal allows you to witness another month? And how many times do we hear people mentioning that Fulan died before he witnessed the month of Ramadan? And Allah blessed us with another opportunity to fast. Well, my dear brother, pay attention to this hadith. Just to teach you the importance and the gift that Allah has given you to witness another month of Ramadan. And the difference between you and those who passed away before they get to witness this month. In the hadith, of Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda he mentioned and he said that I met two men from the land of Bali who had embraced Islam together two men Sahaba who embraced Islam at the same time Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says, I met them. He said, and one of them would strive harder in the religion than the other. One of them would work for his akhirah more than the other. He was more motivated. He says, and the one who was more motivated went out in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal and he died fighting in his cause and he was martyred. This is the one who would strive harder. Talha ibn Ubaidillah says, then one year later, one year after he had been martyred, the other one passed away. One year later, the other one passed away. Talha says that after a period of time, I saw both of these men in my dream. He said, and I was standing with them at the gates of Jannah. He said, so someone from inside Jannah came out and he took the one who died last. And he entered him into Jannah. Then he came back out and he took the one who was martyred, the one who died the year before, the one who worked harder. He took him and took him into Jannah second after the one who died later. He says, Then he came back out and he said to me, O Talha, go back, your time has not come yet. He said, when I woke up, I was amazed at this dream. And I told the people about this dream. <coughs> and they also became amazed. Until the news reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them about the dream. And they told him. So he said to them, what amazes you about this dream? Why are you amazed? They said, Ya Rasulullah, we are amazed because the first man died in the path of Allah and he would strive harder than the second man. But the second man entered Jannah first. So the Prophet wasallam asked him, he said, didn't that man live one year later than the first? They said, yes. He said, didn't he witness a Ramadan that that man did not witness? They said, yes. He said, didn't he pray extra prayers that the first man did not pray? They said, yes. So the Prophet wasallam said, the difference between these two men is the difference between the heavens and the earth. This is Allah's blessing upon you, my brother. 
that Allah Azza wa Jal allows you once again to fast in the blessed month of Ramadan. And it is as though the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from this hadith mentioned that there is no greater blessing than this. So the question is, my brothers, are we going to take this blessing and take full advantage of it? Or are we going to neglect it and allow Ramadan to enter and exit while we did not benefit in anything from it? Fasting, my dear brothers, is special. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Azza wa Jal said that every good deed of the son of Adam is for him except for fasting, it is for me and I will reward accordingly. Allah Azza wa Jal attributed every action to be for the servant except for fasting. He said, it is mine. In other words, it is that special that it is for Allah and no one else. So my dear brothers, do not take the matter of Ramadan lightly. And do not look at it as just another year passing where you follow the same routine as you do year by year. Take advantage of the month and make it a month which is used for your sins to be forgiven by Allah Azza wa Jal. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم لسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحب ومن سن بسنة وصار على نهجه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد. My dear brothers, there is nothing more important than preparing for this month. And preparing for this month is not only by preparing for it by closing your appetite because you can't eat and drink. Or not being able to be intimate with your family. My dear brothers, fasting in the month of Ramadan is not only to fast from food and drink. Take the advice of the great companion Jabir ibn Abdullah. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda. Jabir ibn Abdullah said, he said, if you fast, if you are fasting the month of Ramadan, then let your hearing fast. What does this mean? It means prevent your ears from listening to the haram. Whether it is music, whether it is lying, or backbiting, or gossip, or whatever else. If you fast, then let your hearing fast. He said, and let your eyesight fast. Prevent your eyes from looking at the haram. Whether it's on the TV or out on the street. And this is something which should be implemented all the time. But more in particular in the month of Ramadan. Train yourself, my dear brothers. He said, Allow your eyesight to fast. He said, and if you fast, let your tongue fast from the haram. Do not speak that which displeases Allah Azza wa Jal. Do not indulge in foolish talk. He said, and allow tranquility to overcome you. This is how the fasting person is. He is calm. He is peaceful. He allows tranquility to come over him because he is in a state of worship to Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to witness the blessed month of Ramadan. 
And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the opportunity to take advantage of the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us the strength to fast the days of Ramadan and to pray the night of Ramadan and recite the book of Allah Azza wa Jal in the month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal not to allow the blessed month to exit except that our sins have been forgiven and the sins of all Muslims worldwide. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant victory to our brothers and sisters in the lands of Sham and Burma and worldwide before the ending of Ramadan. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon fadhkuru Allah al-azim yadhkurkum wa shkuruhu ala ni'ami zidkum wa ladhikru Allah akbar wa Allahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon.